Amy Cooper, thank you. It was a great lesson in the power of white supremacy and patriarchy. And thank you, Amy Cooper. She, in response to being told by Christian Cooper, the man videotaping, that her dogs need to be on a leash, which is true, resisting that call to obey the rules, she instead invokes a higher authority, the powers of white supremacy and patriarchy, to rush to her defense and to possibly his demise. Calling the cops. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. She so quickly announced her intentions to call on this power. She didn't think about it. She didn't have to think. It was a reflex. It was reflexive racism. This was some wax on, wax off white supremacy where she had practiced it so much. She had learned it so early. There is a man, African-American, he has a bicycle helmet. He is recording me and threatening me and my dog. She was not being threatened with any form of violence. She was being accused rightfully of breaking a rule and asked repeatedly to abide by that rule. She interprets that as a threat. She's not happy that a black person telling her what the rules are and telling her how she needs to live her life. And then on the call, she improvises. He's also threatening my dog while she's choking this poor little buddy out. She is abusing her power to such an extraordinary degree and so confidently because she knows she can get away with it, which means she probably has done it before. This isn't the first time. You don't pull off moves that smoothly and that quickly your first time out. She is the Mr. Miyagi of this kind of mayhem. When did you first realize you had this power? Why was it your first response to threaten, to call the cops, tell them an African-American was threatening your life? Those are all trigger words for police violence. And you knew them without having to think. Where did you first see that behavior exhibited? When did you first learn that it was okay to do that? When was the last time you abused the power you have in such a way? We start to crack open those questions. We start to get white people to deal with whiteness and the power it confers upon them then maybe there's a shot that we can pull off this multi-ethnic, multi-racial democracy in the United States. But until then, this one by one incident, blowback, somebody loses a job, incident, blow, that's, that, that doesn't scale, as they say in Silicon Valley. White people talking to white people, that y'all can talk to each other and we need you to do that. You need you to do that. Now briefly to my bird watching brother, respect to you. We should probably come up with an NAACP Image Award, like a Medal of Honor for Courage Under Fire and Race Relations. You stood your ground in a non-threatening, moral way. You physically stood there, you morally stood there, you knew you were right, and you gave us all an opportunity, including the Amy's of the world and the friends of Amy's of the world, to do better, to try to do better, to at least recognize what doing worse looks like and what abuse of power looks like. I want the Amy's of the world to not necessarily just give up the power, but use it for good. Use it on the border for some kid who's been separated from their parents. She could have done that, but she didn't. She wielded that weapon of white supremacy against somebody calling her out because she was actually doing wrong. That's all I got right now. Peace.